This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Welcome back to another video presentation brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at angles of elevation and depression. And of course, fundamentally, what you are to take away from this video is that the angle of elevation is equal to the angle of depression because they form alternate angles, which are also referred to as Z angles or Z angles, okay? So here, let's put in B, right here. This B represents the angle of depression, right? And let's put in this A, which is the angle of elevation. The difference between elevation and depression is simply perspective. One person or object is on the ground, right? Looking up at an elevated angle, while another object is up on top of a vertical object, right, and looking down on the lower object, okay? So here, let's let this one be the lower object. This one is the upper object, right? And once we have a relationship like this, the angle formed here is the angle of depression, and the angle formed here is the angle of elevation. It is important to note that these problems are solved using the trigonometric ratios, okay? But what makes these problems difficult is that they're always technical terminologies or terms which are used in the application that persons cannot identify with. So here I've listed out some of the common terms that we need to know in order to have these questions be easier to deal with, okay? So let's look at a term like ladder, string, or length of string, length of wire, or length of ramp. Notice that all of these terms are related to the hypotenuse, okay? So once we are in a situation that asks us about the length of the ladder, right? Here I give you an example. This is what a ladder would look like when it's bracing a wall, right? Here we see that the wall is right here. This is supposed to be a bulb just to bring the situation in perspective. So we see that the ladder is representing the hypotenuse, the wall is representing the opposite side, and here we have the angle of elevation, right, in that lower corner, all right? So these terms here that we have highlighted, ladder, string, wire, and length of ramp are all related to the hypotenuse, okay? Let's look at some more terms. Here we have a vertical cliff, a person, a person standing on a vertical cliff, right? A building or a wall, right? So here we have a building, which is supposed to be separate from the wall, which is also a separate thing, right? A tower, lighthouse, Statue of Liberty, a tree or height of an object in a tree, okay? All of these objects here relate to the opposite side. Okay, so if the question asks us to find the length of the cliff or the height of the person or the height of the wall or the height of the tower, it's asking us to find the opposite side, okay? Continuing with our terminologies, right? And if we look on this side, here I gave you guys uh, a pictorial representation of the situation, right? Here we have some type of object on the ground and we have this person which is elevated by some vertical object. Okay, so here, that's supposed to be vertical object. And the person is right here looking down on the other object. So this line is supposed to be the line of sight. Okay, so also we can add that term to these set of terms over here. Okay, so this is the line of sight. Okay, while this side right here is associated with these terms. Okay, so please make a note of that. We continue on with our list to talk about the adjacent side, okay? So the distance from the base of the tree is the adjacent side. The distance from the base of the tower, distance from the foot of the cliff, and distance from the base of the stand is also another term we can use to refer to the adjacent side. So here I'm highlighting the adjacent side just so we can see, right? Here I'm trying to show an object in a tree, okay? So it's important for us to gain a perspective 
when it comes down to these situations because this is one of the reasons why questions related to angles of elevation and depression seem so difficult all right so let's jump into some examples here we have example number one right a homeowner is to construct a ramp to his front door to make it wheelchair accessible how long is the ramp if the door is four feet above the ground level and the angle of elevation is 20 degrees notice here i've already given a pictorial representation of the situation here we have the door this is the door knob this is the length of the ramp and we see that the ramp is elevated at an angle of 20 degrees and the height above ground is four feet okay so the height above ground here we see that it's the distance from the ground up to the base of the door okay so here we have the situation and we have our triangle so if we're to find the length of the ramp then this is asking us for the length of the hypotenuse okay so notice we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse is missing the angle is given so we need a relationship between what is given and what is missing so here we have the hypotenuse and the opposite side so of course this is telling us that we need our sine ratio okay this is telling us that we need our sine ratio so here we say that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse here our opposite side is equal to 4 and our hypotenuse is missing okay we have the angle for theta which is 20 degrees so this means that right we have our angle so here we can say that the sine of 20 degrees is equal to 4 over the hypotenuse i go over to my calculator and i look for the sine of 20 degrees remember our calculator needs to be in degrees mode okay or else we'll be incorrect so here i have 0 0.342 equals 4 divided by h so this means if i am going to transpose for h this means h is equal to 4 divided by 0 0.342 Okay, plugging this in on my calculator, I end up with 11.6952. Okay, so here this would be in feet since we have the dimension for our units. So that there solves the length of the ramp, okay? So the length of the ramp is given by this figure. We then move on to Example number two, right? So we can say that the length of the ramp is approximately 12 feet. Example number two says an observer standing at the top of a vertical cliff spots a house in the adjacent valley at an angle of depression of 12 degrees. The cliff is 60 meters tall. How far is the house from the base of the cliff? So here we'll have to put in some visualizations, right? So here I'm going to let this be the vertical cliff. Okay, we have a person standing on top of this cliff. Right? Also, I'm seeing a house that's somewhere underground. Okay? Set this cliff down. Nice. Right, so let's put in our imaginary triangle here. S that one up. Okay, so here we have our imaginary triangle, which is a right trigon, and we see that the angle of depression, right? Is this angle formed right here, 12 degrees, have a right trigon, and we're being asked to find the distance from the base of the cliff to the house. So let's highlight that. So we're being asked to find this length. Okay? That's the length we're being asked to find. All right? So what other dimensions are we given? We're given that the cliff is 60 meters tall, so we have the length of this side of our trigon. Okay? So now we can take this information and plug it in. Okay? 
So inside of our triangle, we can put 12 degrees right here because the angle of elevation is equal to the angle of depression. Okay, so here we put in the angle of depression. Now we put in the angle of elevation. So looking at this example, we see that we have what? We have 60 as the opposite side, and we also have the degree for our angle of elevation. What relationship can we form here if we want to find the adjacent side? So the adjacent side, the opposite, and the angle. Hmm, let's think about that. The opposite side and the adjacent side form the relationship given by the tan ratio, of course. So here, we'll have to use our tan ratio. So this means that 60, which is the opposite side, divided by the adjacent is equal to tan of 12 degrees. I go to my calculator and I type in the tan of 12 degrees. Please to ensure that your calculator is in the degree mode. So this now gives me 60 divided by A is equal to 0 0.212556562. So now I transpose for A, this means 60 divided by 0 0.212556562 is equal to A. So now I go back to my calculator, I plug that in. So now I see that A is equal to 282.277. Here our units is in meters, so that is 282.2778 meters, okay, approximately, of course. And that's the answer. So here we see that when we're doing questions involving angles of elevation, we simply need to understand the situation. Draw in that is it for this video. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe for future post notification.